This is the Night Wolf howling at you, and today we're going to sneak our way onto Cobra Island so we can take a look at the Cobra Techno Viper from the G.I. Joe Classified series. This was another figure that seemed like it was a mess to try to get, as uh, it sold out pretty quickly, as I recall, though I do think it has gone back up on stock again. But I did not think to check before I did this, so if it is available still, I'm going to uh, mention that in the description below. On the side of the box, we got some artwork. It's kind of boring looking, to be perfectly honest. It doesn't seem to be the same quality that we got with the previous J. Joe classified figures. And on the back, we see the Techno Viper standing in what looks like the middle of a battlefield holding one of his uh, tools while he diagnosed something, I'm assuming, on a vehicle of some sort. And instead of doing the standard product shot that they've done previously, where they just showed the figure in a static image with some of the highlighted bits, they actually do have this as a diorama since they don't have that sort of thing on the front of the box anymore. Not a bad change, though... I do think the artwork on the box has suffered a bit. And I know these little logos here are supposed to stand for different military specialties, but I actually don't know what they are. And I think, I don't know if they have a listing of what all the different symbols mean. But I'll take a look at that sometime. Of course, we always got the multilingual paper that everybody throws away. Real good for the environment, Hasbro. I would like to note that the new figures with the plastic packaging, which I think this is actually the first of the new, I think this is the first of the new uh, plastic packaging that I've opened up for this uh, channel. And they do have new artwork for the back. And I really like this design. I think it looks cool. Uh, right now on my shelf, I have the old backs for either G.I. Joe or Cobra or Tiger Force or Python Patrol just kind of back there uh, behind the figures. So I'm going to have to start incorporating this as well. Here's our Techno Viper in his plastic prison. And uh, let's go ahead and take him out of there. All right, so we have our Techno Viper in all of his glory. He's, of course, got the helmeted head, which looks pretty nice. Uh, although I do kind of wonder how, how well he can see out of it. And the question in my mind is, are the dots that represent his eyes supposed to be some kind of a lighting effect or to help him see? I guess there is no ore there. All right, let's take a look at his articulation. So on the head, we do have the standard G.I. Joe chicken neck, as I like to call it. Ball joint in the head so it can spin around. Look down, look up, look over to the side upwards, look down to the side downwards. <laughs> um, we got nice silver highlights here on his uniform. The shoulder pauldrons, although they are not actually attached to or not part of his arm they do appear to be actually part of the um they're attached in such a way that it does move with the arm even though it is not actually sculpted to the arm which is actually pretty creative um there is a butterfly joint which again with the way they've got the shoulder pauldron here attached it moves with that see if we can get a good close-up here on this one it goes in there I'm assuming it goes in attaches to the peg and then goes the peg goes into the butterfly joint it's, it, it works out really nicely so 
We've done up and down articulation. And again, you can see the soldier pauldron moves with the up. And you can spin them around. Double jointed elbow for your opposing issues. The transmitter thing on his wrist is not part of the sculpt and can spin freely around so you can move it as you wish. And just to note, the one on the opposite side is not the same one. It is a reverse sculpt, reverse version. So it'll look the same on the sides as it does. Instead of just like, say, being really, really super cheap and just using the same one on both sides. There is something written on that screen. But I, for the life of me, don't have good enough eyes to see it. And I will try to get a photo of it and see if we can get a good look at it later. The wrist, of course, does have a swivel, so we can spin around. And like most G.I. Joe figures, there is some up and down articulation, but also hindered. Oh, no. Sorry. My bad. He actually has the in and out articulation. So... I haven't seen that in a while, a G.I. Joe figure, I don't think. Wow. Um, so, yeah, and that's actually not very hindered by this. Usually the up and down, I think, ends up being hindered the most by the actual sculpt than the in and out does. He does have an ab crunch, so we can crunch him forward like that. Crunch him backwards like that. And I prefer the ab crunch to the boob cut. On figures we do have the ball joint in the waist that allows us to move him all around like he's dancing as if nobody is watching we have the drop down hips we have a thigh cut you know that cut that I keep on complaining that McFarlane isn't putting in his toys even though he had the highly articulated toy thing going on before everybody else Double jointed knee. Oh, shoot. Okay. This knee is apparently fused, so uh, I'm not going to try to bend that one. However, oh my god. So, to note, the bottom of the left knee moves just fine. The bottom of the right knee is stuck. The top of the right knee moves just fine. And the top of the left knee is stuck. So my uh, friend here is going to have to be boiled in order to loosen those joints. Because I am not going to risk breaking the figure. So we do have the standard boot cut for G.I. Joe. We have a hinge at the foot to move it up and down. And, of course, there's a peg in there so we can spin the foot around and stuff. Posability. So that is the basic articulation on our figure. But wait, there is more. We do have equipment with him. Let's start out with, he's got a pistol. I believe this is a new design in Classified. If I am wrong, feel free to correct me. And that will go into the thigh sheath, like so. We have his equipment backpack here. It's got some really nice uh, deco going on, I guess, with the uh, two uh, tanks. And then what I'm going to assume is a pressure gauge. And you'll note there are two pegs down here for attaching this cable to, to go with the equipment. We will talk about this cable a little later. We of course have his um, gun, which has the uh, peg at that point so that you can attach the cable to it, which is cool. 
I'm not sure what this gun is supposed to be exactly, but it is designed for blast effects. But the way this is designed, I would expect it to spray something, maybe, or I guess no. If this, if we look at this like this is like some sort of um, like an air compressor setup on his back, then I'm not sure what would come out of here. Anybody got any ideas? Please feel free to share them. Along with that, we have his hydraulic equipment. We got the obvious one here, which is some kind of hydraulic hammer. Which doesn't look like any hydraulic hammer I've ever seen, but you know. Who quibbles on that sort of thing? We've got a hydraulic wrench of a kind. Although it looks more like a grabbing hand, but I'm still going to go with it's supposed to be a wrench. And we have another one that looks like a grabbing hand. Actually, this one looks more like a grabbing hand than a wrench. So I'm not entirely sure what it's supposed to be exactly. Maybe it's for glass removal or dealing with glass. But to note, the tools also plug into the cable because they are activated by the compressor. As an additional accessory, he comes with this pop-up screen, which Again, I will see if I can get a photo going where we can get something that is easy, easier to see. Because you can kind of make out some lines over here that are probably like, you know, some kind of a gauge. I'm not sure what this little circle thing is supposed to be here or here. Although this looks like some kind of a pressure monitor. And then a Cobra logo. And this fits into the wrist thing right around that back part there. So you can have it attached to him like so. Or if you wanted, you can turn it like that, depending upon your preference for how it looks. And it works in both hands. This backpack, of course, has the small peg that goes into the small hole in the back. It is kind of weird to me that... Is this a... Wait a minute, hold on. Okay, no, maybe I'm just being dumb. Like, for some reason, I was thinking that the attachments there should go on the bottom, but... It looks like he's got a walkie-talkie over here, or a, an old, uh, you know, army phone thing. So I guess it probably should be up, not down. But this handle here throws me off. But anyway, his hydraulic tools fit in there. Like so. We can take his gun thing, attach the cable, and we'll attach it to the first knob here. And we can put the gun in his hand. Let's see, maybe it'll look better if we... So this is just my opinion, but if we have it this way, this cable here, this tube, is too short to go to the gun. Let's see now. If we turn it upside down, if we turn it like that, then the cable actually looks more properly positioned. So the question is, okay, so the handle makes it look like it goes up, but everything else on here makes it look like it should be turned the other way. I guess. So, go ahead, let me know what you think about that whole setup there. And of course, again, we have his little communicator there. 
Now, as a special treat for you all, I do, in fact, have a vintage O-ring Techno Viper. And you can see that the basic equipment is the same on him. Wow, hold on. <clears throat> the, the tools are a little more distinctive. And the ones from the O-ring line are actually bigger than the ones that come with the classified series. But he comes with the grabbing hand. Uh, this no, this still has kind of like a little bit here to make it look like a wrench, but this looks a lot deadlier. And. If we can get it out. Ah, the hammer. So, let's see. Grabbing hands. What I am calling the hydraulic wrench. And the hydraulic hammer. The peg holes are different sizes. But then there's that backpack again. In this case, it does look like it fits a little better. The thing with the vintage one that I'm going to point out is that he actually came with two separate hoses at least the one that i have did admittedly i got mine on the secondary market probably as part of a gi joe lot of figures and not just ordered separately but one tube is longer than the other which i would assume what i would think would actually be for attaching the, to the gun And the other one goes to the, maybe, attach it to his equipment, attach it to his backpack. So he can have both out at one time. Hasbro decided, although I appreciate the paint there, Hasbro did decide to cheap out on us quite a bit by one, giving us just a really sh a short one, which if this was longer, you could have the backpack up or down and have it look fine. And uh, just one instead of giving us two so we can have them holding both the equipments. Admittedly, this is probably a lot cheaper to do two of than this would have been, but still... That's no excuse not to have given us a longer one there, in my humble opinion. I also kind of like that the equipment on the vintage one is silver instead of black. I think it would have been kind of nice if Hasbro had gone ahead and done that too. Now, to give us some additional information, because I did have the vintage one, I also had the vintage tech spec. Techno Viper, Cobra Battlefield Technician. Modern battles involve expensive, complicated machines, and it is inevitable that these machines sustain enemy-inflicted damage, succumb to driver error, or simply break down of their own accord. It is the mission of the Techno Vipers to provide field maintenance support and combat engineer capability to the frontline Cobra troops. Techno Vipers can repair his tanks, build bridges, and retrieve large heavy machines from seemingly inaccessible places. Just because the Techno Vipers carry wrenches and jacks, don't underestimate them. They work their way up from the ranks of Vipers, and each one is a qualified Cobra infantryman. 
They also function as sapers and are always called on as the first wave in insulting a heavily fortified position. For those of you who don't know, a saper is a term used in the military and apparently in the military around the world. That basically means, um, for all intents and purposes, it's like repair crew, uh, but they also will be the ones who plant minefields or take mines out of fields. Uh, so I guess, um, can't think of the character's name right now, but G.I. Joe does have their Minesweeper guy. So I guess he would probably also be a Saper. So anyway, that is our all on the Cobra Techno Vipers. You know, I think they did a pretty good job recreating them for the Classified series. The updates look fine. I mean, the boots still have the same basic look to them. He's got knee pads now, which I think most characters will have the knee pads just because it helps hide the look of the double jointed knee. Uh, you know, and I always do like that the holster and gun are a separate thing on these things. You know, we still have the same quote piping going through on the character in the same spots. And even though they updated the wrist gauntlet here to something actually more technical than what we have on the old one. It's a good update. I do kind of wish though that like with this one where they have the shoulder pads also painted silver. I kind of wish they had done that too, but I'm not going to complain too much about that because it still looks good. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this look at the Techno Viper. Please feel free to like, comment, subscribe. Peace and love.